On 9 Thermidor Year II, the 27th of July 1794, the French politician Maximilien Robespierre was denounced by members of the National Convention as a tyrant, leading to Robespierre and 21 associates including Louis Antoine de Saint-Just being arrested that night and beheaded on the following day. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology and definitions. The name Thermidorian refers to 9 Thermidor Year II, the 27th of July 1794, the date according to the French Republican calendar when Robespierre and other radical revolutionaries came under concerted attack in the National Convention. Thermidorian reaction also refers to the remaining period until the National Convention was superseded by the Directory. This is also sometimes called the era of the Thermidorian Convention. Prominent figures of Thermidor include Paul Barris, Jean Lambert Tallien, and Joseph Fouché. <inaudible> <inaudible> Background Thermidor represents the final throes of the Reign of Terror. With Robespierre the sole remaining strongman of the revolution following the assassination of Jean-Paul Meret the 13th of July 1793 and the executions of Jacques Ebert the 24th of March 1794 Georges Danton and Camille de Molins the 5th of April 1794 his apparently total grasp on power became in fact increasingly illusory especially insofar as he seemed to have support from factions to his right his only real political power at this time lay in the Jacobin Club, which had extended itself beyond the borders of Paris and into the country as a network of popular societies. In addition to widespread reaction to the Reign of Terror, Robespierre's tight personal control of the military, his distrust of military might and of banks, and his opposition to supposedly corrupt individuals in government, made him the subject of a number of conspiracies. Topic. Conspiratorial groups The prime mover for the events of 9 Thermidor the 27th of July was a Montagnard conspiracy, led by Jean Lambert Tallien and Borden de Laws, which was gradually coalescing, and was to come to pass at the time when the Montagnards had finally swayed the deputies of the right over to their side. Robespierre and Saint Just were themselves Montagnards. Many others who conspired against Robespierre did so for strong practical and personal reasons, most notably self-preservation. The surviving Dantonists, such as Merlin de Thionville, wanted revenge for the death of Georges Danton and, more importantly, to protect their own heads. Among the latter were Joseph Fouché and Pierre Louis Bentabel, who engineered Robespierre's downfall. In the end, it was Robespierre himself who united all his enemies. On 8 Thermidor the 26th of July, he gave a speech to the convention in which he railed against enemies and conspiracies, some within the powerful committees. As he did not give the names of these traitors, all in the convention had reason to fear that they were the targets. Later, he enlisted the support of the Jacobin Club, where he denounced Collet and B.O. These men then spent the night planning the following day's coup, with other members of the convention. Arrest of Maximilien Robespierre and Associates Conspiracies against Maximilien Robespierre, who had dominated the Committee of Public Safety, came together on 9 Thermidor the 27th of July, 1794. On that day, in the Hall of Liberty in Paris, Saint-Just was in the midst of reading a report to the Committee of Public Safety when he was interrupted by Jean Lambert Tallien, member and previously president of the National Convention, who impugned Saint-Just and then went on to denounce the tyranny of Robespierre. The attack was taken up by Jacques-Nicolas B. O. Varenne, also member and previously president of the National Convention, and Saint-Just's typical eloquence failed him, leaving him subject to a withering verbal assault until Robespierre leapt to the defense of Saint-Just and himself. Cries went up of, Down with the tyrant! Arrest him! Robespierre then made his appeal to the deputies of the right. Deputies of the right, men of honor, men of virtue, give me the floor, since the assassins will not. However, the right was unmoved, and an order was made to arrest Robespierre and his followers. Troops from the Paris Commune arrived to liberate the prisoners. The Commune troops, under General Jean-Baptiste Coffinhal, then marched against the convention. The convention responded by ordering troops of its own under Paul Barris to be called out. 
When the Commune's troops heard the news of this, order began to break down, and Henriot ordered his remaining troops to withdraw to the Hôtel de Ville. Robespierre and his supporters also gathered at the Hôtel de Ville. The convention declared them to be outlaws, meaning that upon verification the fugitives could be executed within 24 hours without a trial. As the night went on the Commune forces at the Hôtel de Ville deserted until none of them remained. The convention troops under Barris approached the hotel around 2 a.m. on 28 July. As they came, Robespierre's brother Augustin leapt out of a window in an escape attempt, broke his legs, and was arrested. Le Bas committed suicide. Couthon, who due to progressive disease was paralyzed from the waist down, was found lying at the bottom of a staircase. Robespierre was shot in the face and his jaw was shattered. There are two accounts of how he received the wound. One states that, anticipating his own downfall and wanting to have the death of a hero, Robespierre attempted to kill himself and shattered his own jaw with a shot. The contrary view is that he was shot by one of the convention's troops. At the time, a gendarme named Charles André Merda claimed to have pulled the trigger. Saint Just made no attempt at suicide or concealment. Henriette tried to hide in the Hotel de Ville's yard, by some sources after being thrown out a window into a stack of latrine product and hey, but the convention troops quickly discovered him and assaulted him badly, gouging one of his eyes out so that it hung from its socket. <laughs> <laughs> Deaths of Robespierre and his allies Robespierre was declared an outlaw and condemned without judicial process. The following day, 10 Thermidor, the 28th of July 1794, he was executed with 21 of his closest associates, including the following: Adrian Nicolas Gobo, ex-substitute of the public prosecutor; Antoine Gensi; Antoine Simon, jailer of the Dauphin; Augustin Robespierre; Charles Jacques Bougon; Christophe Kochefer; Claude François de Payen. Denis Etienne Laurent, municipal officer Etienne Nicolas Guerin Francois Henriot, ex-commander of the Parisian National Guard Jean-Baptiste de Lavalette, ex-general de brigade Jean Barnabé Dazard Jean-Baptiste Floriot Lescott, mayor of Paris Jean-Claude Bernard Jean Etienne Forestier Jean-Marie Canet Jacques-Louis Frédéric Warmet Georges Couthon Louis Antoine de Saint Just, Nicolas Joseph Vivier, Judge of the Revolutionary Tribunal, Rene Francois Dumas, ex President of the Revolutionary Tribunal. Aftermath Consequences The events of Nine Thermidor proved a watershed in the revolutionary process. The Thermidorian regime that followed proved to be an unpopular one, facing many rebellions after its execution of Robespierre and his allies, along with 70 members of the Paris Commune, the largest mass execution to have ever taken place in Paris. This led to a very fragile situation in France. The hostility toward Robespierre did not just vanish with his execution. Instead, the people decided to blame those who were involved with Robespierre in any way, namely the many members of the Jacobin Club, their supporters, and individuals suspected of being past revolutionaries. The massacre of these groups became known as the White Terror, and was partially carried out by the Muscadin, a group of dandyish street fighters organized by the new government. Often, members of these targeted groups were the victims of prison massacres or put on trial without due process, which were overall similar conditions to those provided to the counter-revolutionaries during the Reign of Terror. At the same time, its economic policies paved the way for rampant inflation. Ultimately, power devolved to the hands of the Directory, an executive of five men who assumed power in France in November 1795. In year three of the French Revolutionary calendar, the Thermidorian regime excluded the remaining Montagnards from power, even those who had joined in conspiring against Robespierre and Saint Just. The White Terror of 1795 resulted in numerous imprisonments and several hundred executions, almost exclusively of people on the political left. These numbers, while significant, were considerably smaller than those associated with the previous reign of terror, which killed over 40,000. Many executions took place without a trial. Topic: 
Thermidorian regime On July 29 the victor of the 9th Thermidor condemned 70 members of the Paris Commune to death, thereafter the Commune was subject to the Convention. As part of the reorganization of French politics, practitioners of the terror were called to defend their records, some such as Tallien, Barris, Fouché and Frérone rejoined the leadership. Others such as Biot Varenne, Collet d'Herbois, Barrieri and Vadir were sentenced to exile in South America, though the latter two managed to evade arrest. Many Jacobin clubs were closed. Freedom of worship was extended first to the Vendée and later to all France. On the 24th of December 1794, the maximum controls on prices and wages was abolished. The government exacerbated this inflationary move by issuing more assignats. In April and May 1795, protests and riots in support of the radicals broke out, culminating in an invasion of the convention by an insurrectionist mob on the 20th of May. On the 22nd of May the convention struck back, having troops under Pichegru surround the Faubourg Street Antoine and force the capitulation of the armed rebels. In May and June 1795, a «white terror» raged in which Jacobins were victims and the judges were bourgeois «moderates». Throughout France the events of the September massacres were repeated, however this time the victims were imprisoned officials of the terror. In Paris, royalist sentiments were openly tolerated. Meanwhile, French armies overran the Netherlands and established the Batavian Republic, occupied the left bank of the Rhine and forced Spain, Prussia and several German states to sue for peace, enhancing the prestige of the convention. A new constitution called the Constitution of the Year Three was drawn up on the 22nd of August 1795, which eased back some of the democratic elements of the Constitution of 1793, establishing an electoral college for the election of officials, a bicameral legislature and other provisions designed to protect the current holders of power. On 5 October 13 Vendemiaire, a revolt led by royalists challenged the convention. It was put down by Napoleon with a whiff of grapeshot. On 25 October the convention declared itself dissolved and was replaced by the French Directory on 2 November 1795. Other Thermidorian reactions For historians of revolutionary movements, the term Thermidor has come to mean the phase in some revolutions when power slips from the hands of the original revolutionary leadership and a radical regime is replaced by a more conservative regime, sometimes to the point where the political pendulum may swing back towards something resembling a pre-revolutionary state. In his book The Revolution Betrayed, Leon Trotsky alleges the rise of Joseph Stalin to power was a Soviet Thermidor. <laughs> 